Assalamu alaikum dear students. I welcome you all here to Allama Iqbal Open University Studios. I hope you all are well and enjoying the weather. We have been studying different topics and the process of learning English has been quite easier for us. And the topic that we have selected for today is synonyms and antonyms. As per my knowledge, synonyms are different words with similar meanings while antonyms are words with different meanings. I think the definition I just gave you about synonyms and antonyms is not enough. So to learn the details about synonyms and antonyms, what actually these are, we definitely need some guidance. And here I would like to welcome our very own expert, Mr. Arshad Mahmood. Assalamu alaikum, Mr. Arshad. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Um, the topic that we have selected for today is synonyms and antonyms. As per my knowledge, synonyms are the words, different words with similar meanings, and antonyms are words with different meanings. You're right. Some um, examples, for example, big, big, large, good, and either, um, big, large, and huge, yes, good, and antonym, antonym, small, short, mm, you're right. So, dear learners, a synonym is a word that means exactly the same as or very nearly the same as another word in the same language. For example, in English, close is a synonym of shut. Note that a synonym may share an identical meaning with another word, but the two words are not necessarily interchangeable. For example, blow up and explode have the same meaning, but blow up is informal, used more in speech, and explode is more formal, used more in writing and careful speech. Uh, definitely, there are words, big, tall, huge, uh, colossal, we cannot use all of them in all context. Uh -huh. For example, I can say he's a tall man, mm. but I cannot say he's a colossal man <laughs> or he's a titanic man. Uh -huh. Titanic also means something very large. Huge. We can use for a fleet, for, for, for a ship, for aeroplane, but not for a person. A person. Uh, for example, you've got blow up and explode. You've got uh, some more like blow up and inflate. Inflate is uh, when you like you inflate a balloon or a tire mm -hmm. and the opposite is deflate mm -hmm. and then shallow that is superficial eager has got different synonyms like earnest and keen and uh, you can find these synonyms in some good dictionary uh, there are thesauruses which give you antonyms and synonyms synonym we'll keep on discussing uh, all these things synonyms and antonyms uh, but first I would like to explain antonym as well. An antonym is a word that means the opposite of another word. For example, bad is an antonym of good. Here are some more examples. You've got good and bad, for example, small and big. And then you've got uh, easy and the opposite is hard. Soft also means uh, takes the opposite hard, male, female. So there are so many antonyms which you can find in a good dictionary. And I must tell you that people learn language in this way. These are all mnemonics devices. Okay. Mnemon mnemonics devices basically are the devices which help a person learn language. For example, some people think that if I learn black, I should also learn green, gray, all the shades. In this way, I can learn all the More shades. Mm -hmm. So people think that by learning antonyms and uh, synonyms, synonyms in a foreign language makes language rich and easy to learn. I know, that's right. So these are, uh, synonyms are different words with almost identical or similar meanings. Words that are synonyms are said to be synonymous. Some people say it is synonym. First thing is how to pronounce it, that is wrong. It is synonym. synonym. And the state of being a synonym is called synonymy. The synonymy. word, Yes, yeah, synonymy. The words basically come from ancient Greek. It is a combi combination of syn, that means with, and onoma, that means name. And you will see this concept of nim in antonym, in synonym, 
and hyponym, hypernym. So nym means name. Right. So words having the same meaning. Mm -hmm. The words car and automobile are synonyms. Similarly, if we talk about a long time or an extended time, long and extended become synonymous. Synonym. Because they've got the same meanings. Lovable and adorable. Yes. But interesting thing is that synonyms can be any part of speech. They can be noun, they can be adjective, they can be verb, they can be pronoun. Uh, as long as both members of the pair are the same part of speech, they are like, uh, you can call them synonyms. Uh, more examples of English synonyms are, uh, for example, noun, student and pupil. And then you've got petty crime and misdemeanor. That is a verb. Uh, as a verb, you've got buy and purchase. Right. I buy want to buy mm -hmm. and I want to purchase. Mm -hmm. they, they are synonyms. And adjectives? Sick and, and ill. Good. And uh, adverb. If I say you have to do the job quickly, mm, can you give me some more, some more word for quickly? Rapidly, fastly. Good. Fastly. Mm -hmm. Lee should be there. Fastly. We discussed. Fast. So fast is a word in English. I was coming to that word and I think you spoke it on purpose. Mm. Fastly is often used uh, uh, by Pakistani learners and I have observed by different uh, people coming from different nations with different linguistic backgrounds using the word fastly because I think whenever ly is added to an adjective, it becomes adverb. For example, beautiful becomes Beautifully. Beautifully. And uh, rapid becomes rapidly. rapidly. And in the similar fashion, they change fast into fastly. fastly that is wrong. Okay. Fast remains fast. And I, uh, I must uh, give you the difference between these two words. Fast as, a, uh, as an adverb and fast as an adjective. If I say he is a fast runner, here the fast is adjective. adjective. And if I say he runs fast, this becomes an adverb, an adverb because I hope you remember the basic difference that we did uh, while doing these parts of speech. Adverb is a word that adds to the meanings of a verb, you know, add plus verb, mm -hmm. whereas adjective is something that adds to the meanings of noun. a noun. Now look at the word fast. He likes fast food. So does it mean the food, food that runs fast? No. No. That is maybe prepared fast or that can be eaten fast. But fastly is no word. You mustn't say fastly. And this is a mistake that you commit in examination and then you lose marks. We may use speedily. Yeah. Right. Uh, but again, depends on the context. All right. Uh, talking about prepositions, on and upon can be used as synonyms. Right. What about over and above? Hmm, quite technical. <laughs> Over is like, they give the idea of height, but there is slight difference. The difference is that when you talk about something that is over, means that is not moving. That is not moving? Moving. Right. For example, there is a fan. What, what did I say? Over? Over is not moving. No, over moves. Above, over moves not moving. Above yes. Above, for example, if I say there is a fan above your head. Right. Moving doesn't mean, I mean, that is definitely moving, but doesn't change its place. Yeah. And there is, there is a roof above your head. But when talk about over, over gives the idea of moving from one place to the other. Birds For example, moving over. Yes. And I can see an aeroplane moving over the building. Right. And I can say, for example, he threw a stone over the building. Right. So prepositions in this regard are very important. And I think that is one area where many Pakistanis, uh, many foreigners commit a lot of mistakes. They don't have the idea of uh, to and from, on, upon, our. For example, look at this, belong to, this expression. You will hear many Pakistanis saying, I belong from. Mm -hmm. Belong from. Whereas it should be, I belong to. I belong to Lahore. But uh, native speakers, they believe that belong to as an expression should not be preferred. The right okay. idea is, I am from. Right. Or what I about come this from. statement? This book belongs with me. They? This book belongs with me. Yes, that belongs on, belongs with, uh, maybe, because there are different prepositions used with belong, right. with the verb. For example, the if, if, for example, if you've got, if you, if you got some, some uh, let's say, decoration piece, mm -hmm. and you're looking for the right place, and somebody says, okay, I think this belongs on that shelf. On that shelf. It fits there. Right. Uh, it can be. It it's can all be about used. the context. Context is very important. 
And note that synonyms are defined with respect to certain senses of words. For instance, pupil as the aperture in the iris of the eye is not synonymous with student. Spelling is same, P-U-P-I-L, mm -hmm. but two different. So we have to keep in mind context. Context mm -hmm. is very important. Right. Similarly, he expired means the same as he died. Mm -hmm. In hospitals, what happens uh, when a patient dies? Doctors don't say he is... Uh, uh, he is dead, they say the patient has Ex expired. expired. Yet, if I say my passport has expired, cannot be replaced by my passport has died. died. Of course. Context. Although the, they, they've got the same meaning. Deceased has got the same meaning, I guess. Deceased means also dead. Mm -hmm. But doctors usually use the word uh, expired. Expire. It means that uh, syno synonyms can be used. Uh, in, cert, uh, in certain context. Mm -hmm. We cannot use a word in all context. And many Pakistanis I've observed when they are writing an essay attempt to use uh, what sort of bombastic language. Mm. Big words, impressive words, but they don't fit really. It's just that we've got the mentality of gaining marks. Yes. The process of learning is somewhere at the back. Yes. Uh, I don't know whether it is right or wrong. Once I, uh, somebody was telling me that there was a man who got who scored 50, 49 marks out of 50 in CSS essay writing uh, paper. And when somebody asked him uh, how he managed to get so many marks, he, he simply said, I wrote simple language, easy language, with proper conjunctions, with proper link, cohesion, co coherence, and I got the marks. Today people, they tend to write difficult words just to impress, impress the, examiner, the examiner, but they don't know this word doesn't fit that place. So they lose the marks. Maybe possible so. they themselves, they don't know what they are writing. Yes, and uh, we should know what the word, uh, what a word means in and a what context. And what the context is requiring, what word is required in the context. It's not for sure that if you write big words, big vocabulary, and you're gaining marks, and that's enough for your learning process. Learning process may be based on simplicity. Simple things make life more easier. Sure. If you look at the history of English, many words which are, uh, which are used uh, in a parallel fashion, they have evolved from different languages, from the Middle English period, from 10th to 15th century, from Norman French, from Latin, from Old English, uh, you know, Anglo-Saxons, these were the people who are supposed to be uh, the ancestors of these Englishmen and they were the people who brought different languages with them to the region and those languages when they f mixed up each other they gave birth to uh, modern English language. Right. Uh, English you know uh, it evolved in three different stages we call Old English. Classic English. Uh, no that is maybe the, the, the time of uh, Chaucer and Spencer but first Old English if somebody gives you te text from Old English, you may not be able to Understood. judge whether it is English or it is some other language. Right. So different spellings and pronounced mm -hmm. in different ways. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even we don't know how to pronounce those words. Mm -hmm. And then is a second stage that is uh, called Middle English. When a person called William from France, he conquered England mm -hmm. and he simply replaced English, uh, French with English. English in the court, in the church. Everybody at that time started learning French. French just like in our situation when the Britishers came here they ruled the part people preferred English, English to Urdu language they thought mm -hmm. it was a matter of pride mm -hmm. speaking English in a public Still place it is thought so. yes so the English people they thought if they wanted to develop economically socially they must learn French so French has given a lot to English this is a middle phase of English. Mm -hmm. After that comes modern English. Right. Uh, but again, if you look at modern English in 16th, 17th century, that might not be as modern as what we have today. Look at some words which have come from these languages. Uh, look at the word folk and freedom and bowman. Right. And their synonyms by the Norman nobility are people, I mean people for folk, folk. and liberty for freedom, freedom. and archer for bowman. bowman. Some lexicographers claim that no synonyms have exactly the same meaning in all contexts or social levels of language because etymology, etymology, any idea? Yeah. Etymology is the historical development, uh, origin and development of a word. Right, origin uh, and development of a word. Yeah, look at the word nice, N-I-C-E. What does it mean? Good. It, yes, something positive today. But nice in the past meant 
foolish oh. or mad. <laughs> so maybe in the 16th century, if somebody called somebody if nice. If in that time I made a mistake of saying somebody, you've got a nice personality, the been, person must have slapped me. <laughs> sure. Uh, some lexicographers claim that no synonyms have exactly the same meaning in all contexts or social levels of language because etymology, orthography, phonic qualities, ambiguous meanings, usage, etc. make them unique. Different words that are similar in meaning usually differ for a reason. For example, look at the word feline. It is more formal than cat. And in the same way, canine. Uh, canine, a word that is linked with dogs. Canine habits. Canine is more formal, perhaps, because it belongs to Latin. And then you've got long and extended are only synonyms in one usage and not in other. For example, a long arm is not the same as extended arm. Synonyms are also a source of euphemism. Euphemism uh, is, uh, is a way of uh, expressing something that is harsh in a polite manner. Look at different con uh, con uh, concepts in, in the world. In different cultures, there are different taboo words uh, which are not liked to be discussed socially. For example, death, magic. In our context, for example, in Pakistani context, uh, the word to die uh, has got different expressions. We, in Urdu, for example, we don't say marjana or margaya, uske wale sab margay. We use the word fourth ho gaye, Allah ko pyare ho gaye, jaab haq ho gaye. In this, uh, these are the euphemisms used for the word to die. And then you've got the word for, look at the word, very common word, bathroom. And people think it is again a taboo to discuss this word socially, publicly. That's why they keep on giving so many words to this word. They have restroom and then washroom. Again, thinking these words don't suffice. They don't give full satisfaction. And then today, modern words are like loo, L double O, loo. And women, they use the word powder room. And sometimes even with capital G, the gents and the ladies. Euphemism, taboo, these all things are linked with. Uh, the, uh, with the topic, your topic, that is synonyms and antonyms. The purpose of a thesaurus is to offer the user a li list of similar or related words. These are often but not always synonyms. And if you want to learn synonyms, you can go for uh, some good thesaurus that is going to give you all the entries. Uh, and sometimes like it is synonym, a word synonym, and just below that, there, are, there is a list of the words which are totally uh, opposite antonyms. So thesaurus is more helpful in this regard than our dictionary. Mr. Arshad, I would like you to give an idea about thesaurus. Many of our students may not be, you know, they should not know what is thesaurus. It's a dictionary, but we'll know the details. In dictionary, uh, you see uh, th there is listing of, uh, or listing of categories from A to Z. Hmm. You, for example, look at the word, uh, f look at the letter A. A will be defined, and after A, 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 B, A, C, mm -hmm, in this mm -hmm. way, every, each and every entry will be there. Right. But in a thesaurus, they look for a word, for example, the word, the same word, large. Mm -hmm. They will give all the words related to that in meaning. For example, look at the word large in a thesaurus, you will have colossal, giant, towering, right. tall, big, huge. And below those, uh, those words, that list, there would be a list of antonyms. antonyms. A person who is a translator, a person who is a student who wants to jot down a good essay, he can seek help from those words. But I think when he looks at a word, let's say huge, he must go for another dictionary of collocation. Collocation is some words go together. In Arabic, for example, look at the word hajar uh, aswad. Hajar means stone, aswad means black. We, ne we, we don't say uh, hajre seya in Urdu. We don't say hajre kala. We say hajre. Uh, look at one more interesting uh, expression. Gora chitta. You mm -hmm. never uh, hear people saying safat chitta. It is. <laughs> that is collocation. So learners, when you find a word in a thesaurus, you must be sure of its usage, how it should be used. If you use just, you are impressed by the spelling or the very look of the word or the word is very big and use it in essay, you, you may lose the marks. It is very important. Sometimes, you know, there are some words which have got, uh, like one word has got different meanings. Several meanings. But yes, those words cannot be, all the meanings cannot be used. Those shades cannot be used in all context. Look at the word uh, branch. The branch 
is something that is related to tree. Mm. And the other is branch of a bank. I know. And it uh, reminds me of a very interesting joke. There was a man, he was sitting on a branch. Right. His friend, he went there, he said, what are you doing on the branch? He said, don't you know, I've got a job. He said, what job? He said, I am branch, branch manager. manager. <laughs> It's very important as uh, synonyms. Don't think they're not important. They're very important. They enrich your stock, your word uh, bank, your vocabulary overall, and they also help you understand the idea of antonyms. The and words, you can improve your learning process. You use the word learning. Here it means all four skills. Mm -hmm. If somebody's got a good stock of words, means he's got uh, the idea of synonyms, antonyms, he's got so many words, he can improve his listening skills. Reading skills, writing, writing skills, skills, speaking skills, all the skills. Mm -hmm. In a nutshell, these synonyms and antonyms are very important. And this idea reminds me of one more idea in some languages, some, one more concept that is of, uh, and, uh, that is of uh, homonyms. Right. Homonyms are the words which have got the same spelling, same sound, but different meanings. For example? Same spelling, same sound. Sound means pronunciation, but different meanings. Uh, for example, the word is uh, cricket. The word cricket has two different meanings. One is? Game and one is insect. Insect. And what is the Urdu word for that? Cricket in Urdu? Jhingar. Jhingar. Uh, similarly, uh, the word beat. B-E-A-T. One is to beat someone. Look at the spelling, same. Pronunciation, same. And meanings are different. One is to beat someone. The other is heartbeat. Third is the beat of the music. Right. Last but not least, the words synonym and antonym are themselves antonyms. Synonyms and antonyms are basically antonyms to each other. Like they are, the meaning is different and they are against each other. So what next? That's all, I think. Should be. So this is all for today and I hope all of you have enjoyed the topic. I mean, I enjoyed it a lot. And I'll repeat my statement again that please write down whatever Mr. Arshad and I try to tell you, mostly Mr. Arshad, I just take a little part on it. Try to write it down. It, this will make more easier to you. Everything is going to be more easier. Practice makes it easier. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. Allah Hafiz.